Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. So this week is going to be a little bit different. In our class, we are going to talk about a specific case, an economy, a very interesting economy, and uh, the economy is located in Southern Africa. And uh, the country is called Botswana. And in this uh, video, we are going to talk a little bit about Botswana, its economic performance, and uh, some of the relevant macroeconomic data about this country. So let's start. Uh, so first, let's, uh, let's look at Botswana. So Botswana is located uh, in Southern Africa, north of South Africa, uh, to the east of Namibia, south of Zambia, and west of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. So, uh, what is interesting about this country is that it has a very phenomenal economic performance. Um, it has had uh, uh, in, an incredible um, level of economic growth. So uh, let's just see some statistics about the country. So uh, basically the country is 80% Swana um, in terms of the ethnicities. Um, so it's not very diverse compared to other countries like uh, uh, Nigeria or Ghana um, or other African countries. Um, um, so it has like around eight ethnic groups, uh, mostly Christian country. And the population is relatively small, it's under uh, 3 million people. We are talking about 2.2, around 2.2. Million people. These are estimates from 2018. This is this uh, data is from Wikipedia, by the way. So the GDP um, per capita, uh, in terms of uh, purchasing power parity that we can use to compare across countries, is around uh, nineteen thousand dollars, which is pretty high. And then um, in terms of um, the the Gini coefficients, we have data from the Gini coefficient here, and we have data from the Human Development Index. In both cases, is high. So, uh, Botswana is a country that mainly produces uh, diamonds. Uh, it uh, exports raw diamonds to other countries, and is one of the main producers of diamonds. And uh, there are certain problems that happen when you have a, an economy that relies on minerals or diamonds. The first problem is what we call the Dutch disease. And the other problem is the resource curse. So of course, some countries have avoided these problems, but some others have suffered from these problems. So what is the Dutch disease? So the Dutch disease is um, an appreciation of the exchange rate that comes from exporting these minerals to the to other countries. So you have more dollars coming into the country. So there is an appreciation of the exchange rate. And this is going to harm other sectors in the economy. Um, the exports of other sectors in the economy. This is going to be uh, usually happens with uh, other kind of uh, symptoms like inflation, for example. Um, and another problem that happens in these countries is what we call the resource course. And the resource course happens when there are like a, there is conflict in society, which you have these groups that fight for these resources, diamond resources, right? And that happens in other countries, for example, in Sierra Leone or like other countries that produce diamonds that have diamonds, uh, the minerals that you have these factions and these groups that fight against each other. And you can have like civil wars out of this. And there is a interesting movie called Blood Diamonds that maybe you have seen in which uh, you have this country that people, you have this faction fighting for diamonds. And there is one scene in the movie with, where a person says, I hope we don't discover oil, right? Because that would be really catastrophic, right? There will be a lot of fighting. So when you have the Dutch disease of the resource course, these uh, diamonds or mineral resources 
that could be feeding economic growth, economic development, prosperity, well-being and happiness end up actually producing the contrary. Um, think about countries like Venezuela, right? One of the richest countries in terms of oil reserves, but actually very poor nowadays. So it's a kind of a paradoxical. And the case of, of Botswana is interesting because it has minimized the effects of the Dutch disease and the resource course. And actually in this country, we can say that diamonds, is, diamonds are a blessing. Of course, there are some issues in the country that we are going to mention, but uh, overall, um, it's, a, it's an exceptional case in, in Africa. And we're going to look at some, some numbers. So uh, here in this graph, we have like the GDP per capita comparison between countries. And this was a graph that uh, is showing data from 1960 to 2003. So we are talking about 43 years. And uh, the country presents the, the, the countries with the highest uh, rate of GDP per capita growth in each region. So for example, in East Asia and the Pacific, we have China and South Korea, right? China grew in this period 5.99%, a phenomenal growth rate. Then in Europe, we have Malta and Ireland. Then in uh, Europe and Central Asia, we have Hungary and Latvia. In Latin America and the Caribbean, we have Belize and, and Chile. In the Middle East and North, North Africa, we have um, Oman and Tunisia. And uh, in South Asia, we have Pakistan and India. And in Africa, we have Botswana and Nigeria. And the rate of growth of Botswana is 6.31. So we are talking about a, a rate of growth of GDP per capita that is that was higher than China. So the country with the highest rate of GDP per capita in the world, according to this data, was Botswana a country that uh, is located in Africa and is a landlocked country, right? It's uh, surrounded by other countries and doesn't have direct access to the sea. And on top of that, Botswana uh, used to be very, very poor in the 1950s. We are talking about um, a country that have like a handful amount of uh, kilometers pave of roads that have like a handful of graduates, university graduates, right? It was a very, very difficult situation for the country. And on top of that, almost like half of the country or a substantial part of the country uh, contains the, the, the um, Kalahari Desert, which uh, doesn't really help agriculture. So, um, it is, a, it is a very uh, interesting result that a country with those characteristics has like had the highest rate of economic growth per capita in the world. So let's look at another uh, statistic here, another um, variable that we call the foreign exchange reserves. So these are reserves that the central bank has. And uh, usually it is considered healthy that a country that a bank has like three months of imports the equivalent in dollars of three months of imports um, so let's say that the country cannot do, does not have any dollars only the dollars that are in the reserves the country could be able to import for three months so but botswana in the 1976 it started with a four months and went up to uh, 47, almost 48 months in 2001. So we are talking about four years of um, uh, foreign exchange reserves. So that means that the country was saving a lot. So that tells a lot about the country that instead of uh, spending, the country was saving a lot and it was saving a lot 
because the prices of diamonds are volatile they depend on they are very sensitive to what's going on in the economy in recessions you have like lower sales of diamonds so the country was preparing for this and they they save a lot so they they were very rigorous at um, at deciding where to spend the money another um, statistic that we can look at is the um, relationship between real GDP growth and government surplus or deficit and you see that Botswana looks like an outlier because it has like a high rate of GDP growth and at the same time it has like a, a government surplus right so that's that's very 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 rare in the set of countries that we are analyzing okay so this uh, in this video I would just I wanted to give you a taste of this country in the in the other video we are going to talk more about why why Botswana has reached this um, situation or had this situation in the in the period that we are analyzing and, and to this date Botswana has um, distinguished itself not just for the macroeconomic data but also for the government governance data corruption for example numbers are relatively low in the region and we are going to talk about that in the following slide thank you